Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be going over the hurricane season so far, talking a little bit more about what the pattern is for the hurricane season coming up for the next month or so, and also we're going to be reviewing some of our hurricane season forecasts from our official hurricane season forecast. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also like to invite you to join our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups down below. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how many Category 5 hurricanes do you think we will have this year? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video, and this is each of our uh, named storms we've had so far this year. We have had all the way to the name F. We've had six so far this year. It's been a big year so far, probably one of the record most so far through about July 12th. Very impressive start to the hurricane season and is not a good sign for things to come later on down the road. Now, in a second, what we're going to do is we're just going to review each of these storms individually, talk about what the tracks were like, what the forecast was, and what ended up happening. But one thing I want to point out is the southeast coast and the mid-Atlantic coast there has been the most active so far this season. We've had three storms that have kind of started out in the Gulf or Caribbean, or actually four there, but pretty much all of them but one ended up being offshore of the Carolinas uh, to some degree there, uh, which is very interesting, and I wonder if that's going to trend towards, you know, sticking that way later on in the season or if it's going to kind of fizzle out for that area. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to move on and take a look at the individual storms individually. So first we have Arthur here. Uh, Arthur was an interesting storm pretty early on in the season. Uh, I remember it gave us impacts here in Virginia. Uh, that one was in the middle portion of May. So a very early tropical storm. Uh, and it was a tropical storm. Anywhere you see the circle, I believe the triangles is where it was a tropical depression there. And then the circles are tropical storm status. Uh, so you can see it came pretty close to the Outer Banks. It started off just south of Florida. Oh yeah, I remember this one. It gave some pretty heavy rain there to the uh, east coast of Florida there. Was kind of offshore for a while and then brought some impacts there for eastern North Carolina and eastern Virginia. Uh, so that was a very early storm. And then already for the month of May, at the end of May, we did have another one, Bertha here, which was a tropical storm briefly uh, there just before it hit South Carolina. It curved back inland. This one also brought some impacts to eastern Florida there. And then here was uh, tropical storm Cristobal, which was just in the beginning of June. This was almost a third May storm. And this is the one that crossed over from the Pacific through Mexico. Uh, and kind of stuck around there near the Yucatan Peninsula, and then it just headed straight northward and hit Louisiana. That's a pretty major tropical storm there, brought many, many impacts there, costed millions of dollars uh, from flooding, wind, things like that, and it lasted pretty long as a tro tropical system well up into Canada there, which was extremely interesting as well for an early June system. Now, we're only halfway through. Again, we have six systems, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the more recent three that we've had so far this season, and then we're going to start talking about things that are coming up in the future. We're going to start comparing this season to other seasons, see what we're kind of looking at here. All right, now next up we have Tropical Storm. What's this one going to be? Dolly, Tropical Storm Dolly, which was towards the end of June. We had two systems in May, two systems in June, and we've had two systems in July so far. This was the latter of our two June systems here. It was a very brief tropical storm here, Dolly. Uh, it it kind of formed there offshore of North Carolina, kind of how this season's been. And then it just stuck around in the Atlantic uh, for a while and then eventually moved out. So pretty interesting storm there. Here was Tropical Storm Edward here, which was the first storm for July. So we just had this one just about a week ago. This was one of the more surprising ones, and it kind of just was in the middle of the Atlantic. So it was less of, a, less of a story. I think this was the one we didn't even make a video on, uh, so it wasn't really a big story. It hit Bermuda, though, uh, kind of with some impacts, and eventually the United Kingdom, it looks like, as well, as well as maybe uh, Germany, and, Germany and the Netherlands. Very interesting there. Possibly even impacted France, so... Pretty interesting there. I don't really pay attention to European weather, but yeah, that's pretty interesting. And then obviously here is our most recent storm, Tropical Storm Fay, which I'm pretty sure just fizzled out. So this is our most recent one we just talked about. Uh, and this one started out south of Louisiana, kind of chilled there for a little bit as a low pressure system. And then it went over the southeastern United States, overland, and then formed offshore of South Carolina there. 
uh, and it rapidly intensified offshore of the Outer Banks, brought some heavy rain there. Um, what's interesting is I live in Southeast Virginia, and even though it tracked very, very close there to the shore, and even though the models were showing inches and inches of rain, we didn't even see one drop of rain, maybe some drizzle here and there, but really not even anything measurable. Very interesting that we didn't get any impact from that one, considering how close it was to the coast. But I know the Delmarva, New Jersey, especially Delaware there, got extreme impacts in southeastern uh, New Jersey there. Tons and tons of flooding rain, six inches plus of rain, I'm pretty sure. So very, very impactful storm. Uh, and it's the first storm to impact the northeastern United States that was tropical since like 2012. So a very historic storm. Very interesting. And usually this early on, we definitely don't see a storm impact the northeastern United States. Usually it has to be much later in the season. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to start comparing this season to other seasons like 2017, uh, 2005, and some other years like that. So obviously what we're going to do first off is take a look at this season. And this is a cool graph. You can see each month pretty clearly. Uh, the status of all of these was the tropical storm maximum. So we had Arthur, Bertha in May, Cristobal, Dolly in June, and then Edward and Faye in July so far. Might get a third or fourth system here in July. That would put us well ahead of 2005 and put us off for a really interesting start to the hurricane season. Uh, and then here's 2019. 2019 was considered a very, very active year, actually, but it got off to a slow start. As you can see, uh, by the time we're at July 12th, we would have had one system. Tropical Storm Andrea there towards the end of May, and then we had Barry and Tropical Depression 3 in July. Uh, and then by the time we were reaching early uh, or middle portion of August, we'd only had three systems. We're already at six, and we're in the beginning of July, so well ahead of 2019 easily. Here's 2017 here, and... Uh, yeah, by the time we were at early July, we had three named storms and then four tropical depression status storms because we had tropical depression four there. And again, doesn't even compare to how active this season has started out. And 2017 is another one of those years that was considered to be very, very active. So, I mean, this was, we're looking at pretty historic stuff here, guys. I don't think many of you understand just how intense this is so far. Uh, last but not least, let's take a look at 2005, uh, and here's the one that this compares the best to because, as you can see, uh, we didn't have any May systems, but we had one there uh, in June, well, and then one at the end of June, and then we had three in the beginning of July. We were at Tropical Storm, or we were at the name Emily, but not F yet by the time we were at about July 12th. Keep in mind, we did have three hurricanes by the time we were at now, so there were more intense storms. So far, that's the only difference that sets 2005 way ahead of this season. We have like Category 4, Category 5, back-to-back -back by the time we're at like July 15th. So obviously, we're nowhere near that active so far or that intense, uh, but we do have the same amount of named storms. So, so far, as far as the named storms, we are on pace to break the record if it continues to be active, uh, which would be extremely interesting to do this year. All right, and then here's the seasonal statistics real quick. Uh, for 2005, this is the records we would have to break. They had 31 tropical depressions, 28 total named storms, which uh, we're at six so far. We could break that record easily if we just keep up the pace, obviously. 15 hurricanes would be extremely hard to break, especially since 2005 already had two by the time we were at mid-July. We would need a ton of hurricanes to break that record later on, and they already had two major hurricanes by the time they were at the 15th of July, we had we have zero, obviously, uh, and that was seven was the record. That would be a little bit easier to break because we have gotten close to that with some later season storms, uh, so not totally impossible. And then $171 billion, uh, second costliest tropical cyclone season on record. Um, all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're just going to review our hurricane season forecast. Just take a look first off at the velocity potential anomaly, which is going to tell us about how active we could get coming up and then we're going to review that hurricane season forecast that was most recent and then we're going to take a look at our comment of the day. All right. Here we are taking a look at that 200 millibar velocity potentially not uh, potential anomaly and all you need to know about this is red means not good for tropical development, green means good and white means about equal. All right. So we were in we were kind of in a uh, white slash green when we had a couple of tropical storms there in the beginning of July. And now we're going to be heading towards a red. Here is for the 15th of July, which means it's extremely unlikely 
that we're going to see much tropical activity, especially the deeper red you go. Uh, so I am expecting kind of a quiet period coming up here for the middle portion of July. Here's July 19th. You can see we're still kind of in the oranges. It would be possible, but just not as likely. So don't, don't, you know, quote me on this and be like, well, you said there was going to be no tropical storms at all. I'm just saying it's going to be harder for these storms to develop in these types of conditions. So it's going to be a less favorable period here. But by the time we're reaching July 22nd, we go back into the whites and greens for the Caribbean, the Gulf, the East Coast. I think July 20th through the 1st of August is going to be another hot period where we could definitely see something pop up here. Again, here's July 22nd. That's going to be a Wednesday. Uh, and then here's July 28th. Then we're still in the greens and whites there for the Caribbean, the Gulf, the East Coast. I think if this is to occur this way, we are, we are definitely going to see a couple more named storms here to close out the month of July, which again will put us right there in the running with 2005. As far as named storms, we're looking at another favorable period. If that favorable period lasts into August, we're in trouble. I'm just putting that out there because the waters are warm. August is when we're going to start to see more and more activity. The waters are only going to get warmer. Uh, we're, if we can stick in this favorable period, expect a lot of storms coming up over the next month or two. Uh, there obviously will be some lulls in it at times, but overall it's looking like we're going to start things out favorable to the kind of the peak of hurricane season, which starts out in August. We're not even in the peak yet, and we've had a lot of storms. All right, here was our most recent hurricane season overall forecast. You can see tropical waves will have a much easier time developing in this green shade, very favorable conditions. The purple is the wild card, but at this point I'm thinking maybe more activity than usual because we've already had so much activity uh, there for the Caribbean. We're expecting rapid development, could see many storms become major hurricanes as they come from the green area into this red area and then eventually head into the pink or the purple region there. This could be an area where we see tons and tons of intensification, uh, very strong development there. And then we see near normal development, but most storms could already be major by the time they're reaching this pink region, because to get to the pink region, most of the time they're going to head from the red region to the pink region. Otherwise, they will just develop in the pink region where they could still develop very rapidly. We saw this with Hurricane Michael most recently, uh, but this happens very frequently where the Gulf is just an oven. The Gulf is just an oven for these storms. Uh, and these storms are basically like, uh, you know, dough. They just rise. That was the stupidest analogy I've ever said in my life. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, let's get into the named storms forecast here. I, I left that little blooper in. I always delete those, but I'm just going to leave that one because I thought it was so funny and stupid. So here's the named storms forecast here. You can see for our 2020 amount of storms forecast, we're expecting 14 to 20 named storms, 7 to 11 hurricanes there, and 4 to 7 major hurricanes. 7 would be tied with um, 2005. 4 would obviously not really compare because 4 is kind of more normal. We do see that from time to time. Hurricane 7 is a little closer to normal. 11 is pretty extreme. And then as far as named storms, 14 is a lot closer to normal and 20 is much above average. So we're expecting anywhere from slightly above average hurricane season to well above average, possibly close to record-breaking hurricane season. That's pretty much where we're at right now. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what is your favorite weather movie? And I realized this was a really stupid question pretty quickly after asking it, uh, after I got about 200 comments or so that said Twister, uh, and I just had to pick one. So Daryl Schmidt, hopefully I'm saying your name right, he said, Twister, it's a classic, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's motivated me to get into meteorology and storm chasing as a hobby. And I think that's beautiful. Obviously, Twister is the most classic weather movie there is. I don't think there's any debate about that. I don't know why I asked that question. It's the clear answer. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.